Hi, I'm Ben Langdown from the OU Sports and Fitness team and I'm here at the Gatorade Sports Science Institute and that's on the IMG Academy. So I've come to meet with senior sports scientist Tim Roberts who's going to do some sweat testing with me today. I'm going to play some tennis, I'm going to get put through my paces and Tim's going to have a look at my hydration strategy and see how we can personalise that for my tennis and my performance on court. So my name is Tim Roberts, I'm a senior sports scientist with the Gatorade Sports Science Institute and we've got Ben coming in to us today, we're going to do some sweat testing, we're going to find out how much sweat he's losing, how much sodium he's losing in that sweat and then how we can help him personalise his hydration strategy. So obviously we're going to go out and do sweat testing later. Uh, the first part of that is going to be fluid balance and to do that we're going to measure your body weight before exercise, uh, we're going to measure, measure your body weight after exercise to identify the change. Okay? And obviously if we want to understand how much of that uh, weight gain or weight loss is to do with fluid, uh, we need to measure also how much fluid you're going to be consuming. So out on the court you're going to have uh, as much water and as sports drink as you want and you're going to drink as much or as little as you want. We want you to do what you normally would as your habits. And so we're going to weigh out bottles for you so we can identify not only how much fluid you are from uh, consuming to measure your sweat rate, but also we want to understand what's your current behavior like. Okay, if we want to make changes for an athlete when it comes to nutrition and hydration, we want to understand what do they do currently and then what is the ideal and then find ways in how we get there. So to get started, the first thing that we're going to do is you're going to go to the bathroom, grab a uh, sample cup and provide us a urine sample and we're going to find out whether or not you're hydrated. So we're going to put this in here. Let's see if it's going to analyse it on the other side. Okay, so you provided us that urine sample, and now we need to measure what we call urine specific gravity to see how hydrated you are. So we use a pen refractometer. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to calibrate it with deionized water. Okay, so we can see 1.0234, okay, so we know that you're uh, minimally dehydrated and we'll show that in your report for you as well. So Tim, you've just cleaned my arm. Yep. Um, and you're going to put a sweat patch on me. Yep, so the sweat patch is going to capture a small amount of your sweat, uh, it allows us to analyse it and to find out how much sodium you're using in it. So we're going to put this on, this is, you can completely ignore this while you're playing tennis. Uh, at a natural break in play, uh, we're going to just see how uh, absorbent the patch is being, how much sweat is in it, and if we should be taking it off. Uh, but you don't have to worry about it. This is just a small bit of netting that's going to help that patch stay on. Alright, are you ready to go? Okay, so today you came to the Gatorade Sports Science Institute and we went through that sweat test. Um, obviously we understand that dehydration can have a big impact on both health and performance, so we wanted to understand um, how much you were sweating on the tennis court, what you were losing in your sweat, so how much sodium uh, were you losing is obviously the main uh, electrolyte that we lose, and then we were also monitoring how much you were drinking, looking at that hydration strategy so we can better help you in the future. So. We've got your report to go through, uh, you can see from the report we know that the testing date, we know the environmental conditions which obviously have an impact on sweating, so it's 26 degrees Celsius, yeah, about, it's very 50, warm. <laughs> about 50% 50, 50 humidity, uh, you played for an hour, an hour and 45 minutes yeah. at a high intensity uh, and uh, to start with the key part is uh, your pre-test hydration status, so you provided that urine sample before you came in and we saw, uh, we measured something called urine specific gravity, so that's basically how many, what's the solid particles, the concentration of solid particles in your urine as a good indicator of hydration status and we saw that you came in with a USG of 1.023 uh, which was minimally dehydrated. So you were already actually going to start tennis in a minimally dehydrated 
state putting yourself at a small disadvantage. Yeah, um, which is not a good starting point then. Not a good start. Not a good so start. So in terms of the the colour, then it was um, it was more yellow than it should have been. Yeah. So what we tell our athletes is that urine colour is a very easy way to monitor uh, hydration status. Ultimately, you want it to be almost clear, but not quite. So imagine if you've got a glass of lemonade, uh, like freshly squeezed lemonade, and a glass of water. You pour them, mix them together, you'd have a very pale coloured uh, liquid. That would be what you want your urine to look like. Okay. As soon as it starts to get any darker that, than that, it can be an indicator of, of dehydration. dehydration. So moving on to the results from the actual test. Um, so, so I had that sweat patch on my arm. Yep, so what we did collecting. is we measured both uh, your body weight uh, before and after, yep. and we also measured how much fluid you were taking on board. And so the net difference in your body weight would be whether you uh, obviously gained or lost weight, depending on how much you drank, uh, and then that difference is going to be related to your sweat rate. Okay. At the same time, yes, we had what looked like that band-aid, uh, we've got a sweat patch uh, on your forearm and that allowed us to capture a small sample of that sweat so then we can analyse it in our biochemistry lab and find out how much sodium you had in it. Okay, so this is the report that comes out. Yep, so this is the report. So the first thing that we do is uh, we look at some key things during uh, the test. Uh, the first one being how much carbohydrate you took in. So the reason we do that is because carbohydrate is obviously the main fuel for your muscles during uh, exercise. So the first thing we did was look at that, and we you were taking in about 21 grams per hour. Uh, and based off the latest sports science literature, uh, with a high intensity activity like tennis uh, and the duration, we want to be aiming for more around 45 to 60 grams uh, of carbohydrate per hour. So you were a little bit lower than our recommendations. Uh, so that's the first piece. So that carb intake was coming from the, the sports drink? Yep, so uh, you were consuming, you had available water and a sports drink on the courts, uh, and yes, yeah, so that was that, where that carbohydrate came from. Okay. So the next thing that we want to look at is going to be sweat rate. So how much fluid were you losing per hour while you were out on the tennis court? Felt um, like a lot. So obviously you're not accustomed to the environment here, and maybe you naturally have a high sweat rate, um, uh, genetically sorry. So we see here 1.9 liters an hour uh, sweat rate. Okay. That sounds high. <laughs> so uh, as far as our classification, so we've collected data with uh, hundreds and thousands of athletes uh, over the years in many different sports, different age groups, uh, and we have built our classifications from those. So, And we're finding that from our classifications, that is a very high sweat rate. Okay, so 1.9, so every, uh, every hour you're losing 1.9 litres of sweat, which is 1.9 bottles of sweat every hour. Okay. So maybe back in the UK where the, the environment's different, but that figure would be lower. Absolutely. So the two main factors which are going to influence your sweat rate are going to be the environment and also the intensity of exercise. Yeah. So obviously today was a very high intensity day on the court. If you were to do uh, a much more relaxed game of tennis, that sweat rate would come down. And as you mentioned, if we're back in England uh, and we're in cooler temperatures, again, that sweat rate would be much lower. Anytime we do a sweat test with athletes, uh, the results are only applicable when it's in the same environment and the same intensity exercise. Yeah, uh, so, so you can compare exactly. like with like. Uh, and if we have athletes that compete in different environments, so some of them are traveling all over the world and the, the environment will be changing, it's necessary for us to do sweat testing in each of those environments to be able to educate them on their, how their needs differ. Okay, so yeah. when they go to those different environments, they've got a strategy that they can use exactly. to help their performance. Everything about this report, and we'll get to it at the end, is about how do we develop a personalised hydration and fueling strategy just for you. Okay. Okay, so next we're going to look at uh, your sweat sodium. Okay, and so when it comes to sweat sodium, the thing that we're most interested in is going to be sodium rate of loss. Uh, and a simple way to explain this is some athletes who have very low sweat sodium concentration may have a high sweat rate and therefore could lose a lot. Other athletes who may have a very high sweat rate might have very low sweat sodium concentration and might not lose as much. So it's really the rate of loss which is going to dictate do we want to add any extra um, electrolytes to your beverage as you go out uh, to play a sport. So for you, uh, we saw the rate of loss, obviously you had a very high sweat rate uh, and because of that uh, we had again a high sodium rate of loss. So you were losing around just over 1600 milligrams of sodium uh, every hour. Okay. Uh, when we look at uh, what you uh, consumed while you were on the court, uh, you only consumed around 248 milligrams in that sports drink, uh, and with total losses uh, about over 2,900 milligrams. Um, so you'll see later on in the report when we get to our recommendations, we are actually going to recommend that you consume a little bit more sodium uh, in the future uh, to help replace your losses, uh, but also help to retain some of the fluid that you consume. 
So next we're going to talk about your overall fluid balance. So this is very simply, how much sweat did you lose relative to how much fluid did you consume? Yep. So uh, if we look at the scientific literature and evidence available, 2% uh, is a, uh, very much the mark that we're looking for. Okay. So if you lose more than 2% of your body weight uh, due to sweat loss, uh, it can result in not only cognitive, uh, but also physical uh, detriments to your performance. Okay. So we see today, um, you had total sweat losses uh, of 3.3 litres okay, in that uh, entire tennis session, and in that time you drank 1.2 litres. Um, so when we look at that relative to your uh, body weight, we see that that was about minus 2.9% uh, uh, of a loss. Um, not uncommon in Florida with the high heat and the high humidity and obviously high intensity exercise as well. So that means that 29 greater than the 2% uh, the fluid yep. loss or dehydration, so therefore my performance would have suffered and yep. I could feel myself you know, getting more fatigued and losing concentration towards the end. Absolutely. So that could be a reason for it. And absolutely, and this was obviously just training today, yep. but imagine that in a competition setting. Uh, we often yeah. find that uh, individuals who have a high sweat rate, uh, who don't have a personalized hydration strategy, it can often be in those final uh, games, final sets, uh, where they have issues on the test score. Yeah. So, we saw your, all those results from the test, and so now what we've got is we've got recommendations for you for in the future. So if you were to repeat what you did today, what should you be doing? Okay, okay. So, let's have a look. When it comes to pre-training, okay, so if we look at uh, the most of kind of the best recommendations that come from the literature, uh, we want to make sure we turn up hydrated. Okay, so really what we do is about four hours before exercise, we want to start fluid consumption. Okay, and uh, for you, uh, this is based on body weight, we'd have you consume around 0 0.4 liters of fluid. At this point, uh, then what we want to do is if no urine is produced uh, after that time and before you exercise or if that urine is still dark in colour, uh, we'd recommend that two hours before you start play tennis, uh, you'd have 0 0.3 litres again. Okay. Okay. Uh, so these, these recommendations are based off studies uh, of pre-exercise uh, fluid uh, consumption and this is our kind of best uh, options for you to show up hydrated. So then we move on to the during training recommendations. Okay, so what we do is obviously we saw, first of all, you weren't consuming enough fluid, so your fluid recommendations are higher than what you were consuming. Uh, and secondly, we know we want to try and increase that carbohydrate intake. Okay, when we try and make changes with our athletes, uh, when it comes to nutrition and hydration, we don't immediately have to jump to what is optimal. Okay, we want to move in that direction, obviously we want to get there, but often it's like small changes and gradual changes which are the most successful. So you'll see on this first recommendation, we've got you consuming uh, a little bit more fluid. Okay, so this will result, uh, instead of that 2.9% dehydration, this will result in about 1.5% dehydration. Okay. okay, and instead of going all the way up to that higher range of carbohydrate, we've found uh, some a carbohydrate intake at 35 grams per hour, which is in between that ideal range uh, that I, the report highlighted and also what you work currently. Um, and you can see that recommendation is about a litre of water and then um, about 1.5 litres of sports drink. Okay. okay. Yeah. And obviously that uh, amount of sports drink will also help provide a little bit more sodium for those sodium losses as well. Sodium and the, and the carbs. Yeah. Yep. Brilliant. And then a second option. With this, this is going to be, uh, again, a, uh, increased fluids to what you were consuming today, but also uh, this time it teaches you a different way uh, of getting that carbohydrate. So it can highlight that not only does it have, could it come from a sports drink, but it could come from a non-fluid carbohydrate source as well. So uh, this time a little bit more water um, than in the first option, a little bit less sports drink, and then uh, that uh, carbohydrate food or snack. As well. Okay, so 1.5 litres of water, 750 millilitres of sports drink, and yep. the energy juice. Yep, which cool. is going to be a uh, just a carbohydrate source that is convenient. Yeah. Uh, put it in your bag with your tennis racket as you head to the court. Fantastic. So two different options for me to weigh up, one with food, one without. Yep, uh, and uh, like anything, uh, easier to go out. With this report, uh, now you can be more prepared when you get to the court and slowly make these changes uh, and see how you feel. And hopefully play better. That's always the goal. Okay. Cheers Tim. No problem. Thank you very much. much.